Now, now, believers tend to view the new covenant basically as easier than the old covenant. Not as strict, not as heavy, not as stringent, easier. And you would say that the new covenant seems to be more the more kind of casual covenant compared to the old covenant. You kind of come as you are. You know, and the old covenant, well, we do, but we kind of hang out. The old covenant was filled with regulations. And the Orthodox Jews try to follow it in their way. And they have set prayers for every time of the day, of every day. Prayers for almost every activity they have. They have two sets of dishes, one for dairy, one for meat, because they don't want to put the one on the other. Because they, they've expanded and expanded upon the law. On the Sabbath, they cannot turn on an electric light, according to how they interpret the word kindle a fire. They have everything, cooking, how, marriage, health issues, everything. I remember I went to an Orthodox Jew's house for Sabbath dinner once, and uh, he, had a, he actually had a, he had a Spanish family living with him. And on the Sabbath, he had them do everything. And so on the Sabbath, they did it. They cooked the meal. They cooked this big turkey. And he even let the, the Spanish woman pray. I'll never forget it. She says the prayer, we're all gathered together, the Orthodox Jew bows his head, and she closes in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I looked at the Orthodox Jew, and I expected the yarmulke to spin around or something, but nothing. He went right for the turkey. There was no missing a beat. It was a, you know, they devise ways to get around also things, you know. So our picture of the law and the Torah of the first covenant is one of being harder. And now we have the new covenant, the easier version. The idea, your old covenant, kind of, you know, you know you're, you're, you're every single thing in your life, new covenant, you know, hang out, you know. You need anything, you know, seeker sensitive, you know, just hang out, you know. You know, and certainly this, in some ways, you could say that this helped the gospel spread because it's very challenging to spread the law to the nations when the first thing you have to do is get circumcised. I mean, here you are, you're ready to say yes to your faith, and they're rushing you off for surgery. <laughs> here, here, you have a new life, God's plan for your life, and here there's a knife that was coming, you know. <laughs> you know, that is really, really true, and this had to be resolved in the Council of Jerusalem. Can someone become a believer in Jesus without first being circumcised? Amazing. I mean, you know, you think of, it says be baptized, that's easy compared to it. I mean, this would affect our evangelism ministry if they didn't change this. You know, we'd go out, it would be the five spiritual laws. God has a great plan for your life, and he has this too, circumcision. You know, it would be very different in our altar ministry. You know, we compare this, and it seems stringent to us. You know, one of the, you know, one of the things, if you ask most people who are more careful about the word of God, you know, Orthodox Jews or people who call themselves Christians, they'd say Orthodox Jews. Which, you, they say you, that would seek the holiness or, or actually walk under the reverence or fear of God more, they'd say Orthodox Jews. Or which has more self-control? Most would say Orthodox Jews. And it goes along with this idea. Because if you looked at what is called Christianity in many places, it would not compare to this, to the, to the uh, reverence and men, the many forms that the, that the world, actually the Christ, Christian world takes. It's often people feel we can do whatever we want. I mean, we can have revivals, and people do whatever it seems that comes to us. You know, um, you know and, and it goes into some believers just go into craziness because they get away from the Word of God, and they believe anything of the Spirit. They think anything weird is of the Spirit. That's not true. Or believers who freely put the words, thus saith the Lord, in almost everything they say to other people. And that is not a reverence for God. That is an irreverence. You cannot, I mean, God can speak, and he can speak like that. But if you're doing that you, loosely, if it's not God, then you're irreverent. You don't see that much in the Orthodox world, you know, or to doing that. I mean, you know, you know, you don't see many Orthodox Jewish evangelists. I mean, you don't see on television many Orthodox Jewish people trying to preach something that's going to bring others into their faith. It doesn't happen. Uh, because... It is, it, you have this law, and you have, you have all these things. You don't, and so the, the idea is that when we look at the Old Covenant, we think very, very hard. When we look at the, our covenant, we think, well, easy. And there's something easy in the sense that he says, my yoke is easy. But there's something else that we're missing. 
You know, we think, I mean, you know, the Orthodox Jew will say, you know, I have to pray now, I pray now, I pray now, I pray this and this and this. We, you know, if we say, hey, I got to remember to pray today, you know, or maybe I'll read a Bible verse. Maybe I'll, you know, and I'll go to services, you know, I'm not really serving, but I'll, I'll, you know, I'm not really getting involved, but, you know, and people, but I I have it all, I have a life together, and I put God into my life. I spend my nights watching television or surfing the web, and, you know, often we have walks of laxity, and not really much is required. And so, you know, so the ultimate thing, you know, if we, you looked at people, you looked at the two groups and said, which appear to be people who actually sacrifice more for what they believe? And many would say Orthodox Jews, because they're doing it, and yet that's crazy because we're the ones who have the sacrifice. They're the ones who don't have the sacrifice. So it needs to be reflected in our lives with a life of sacrifice. And we'll say New Covenant is grace. Well, that's true. The New Covenant is grace, so therefore it's easier. We're forgiven, yes, or as Paul said, therefore should we go on sinning, that grace may abound. And many believers, they wouldn't say it with their lips, with their lives, they would say it. And here, you know, the the sign also that many believers don't really take sin that seriously by the fact, manifested by the fact that they're still in the sins they've been in for years. That's really not necessarily taking sin that seriously. And it's a view which becomes laxity in the new covenant. And it also goes with American culture, do your thing and please yourself. And so, and so it, it's reflected in many churches today where it's just, it, it's basically, you know, there's not really challenges, not really the cross, not really the blood, not really the preaching against sin. It's, hey, you know, God wants you to be, you know, to have even more in life than you have now. And yet this idea that the new covenant is easier than the old covenant is false. And look at the verse right here. Anyone who rejected the law of Moses without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses, how more, you know, would, would die. How much more severely do you think a man deserves to be punished who has trampled the Son of God underfoot? What is this? It's radically different from the idea that most believers have. I mean, completely overturned. What it's saying is, if it's, it's not the law of Moses that's more severe, that, that's, that's bigger, that's great. It's the new covenant that is. In the law of Moses, you'd be killed for various sins. And here what it's saying is, if you had that, the new covenant, it would be how much more severely is the standard. And that's not only one, that's not the only scripture. That's basically.